Welcome to another training demo by SQLAzureTutorials.com. Today our topic of discussion is Project Houston. So let's jump right into this demo. Uh, well, what is Project Houston? Uh, Houston is a lightweight and easy to use database management tool for SQL Azure databases. Uh, it is currently available as an online uh, application. It is designed specifically for web developers and other technology professionals, including DBAs. Um, the solution is to really quickly develop, deploy, and manage uh, data-driven applications in the cloud. So for now, or actually this has been out a few months, but before that, you really had to um, essentially use uh, SQL Server Management Studio to connect to the cloud SQL Server or SQL Azure, uh, but there was a limited uh, functionality. So uh, this is a nice tool that we will uh, take a look at. Um, it provides, like I mentioned, a web-based database management tool for basic database tasks. And it is a cut-down, uh, scaled-down version of SSMS. It's not going to be as robust. Uh, the functionality is going to be somewhat limited. However, it's still a step in the right direction. So, um, uh, you know, at this point, I guess it's better than nothing. And you can, uh, with this tool, you can browse database objects. You can also execute queries. And you can, uh, it's helpful in designing and editing a database schema. And also, you can edit table data with this tool. So a little bit of background about uh, this application. Uh, the tool is available from this location, uh, which is sqlazurelabs.com slash houston.aspx. Um, we will uh, look at that in a minute. Uh, basically, when you do that, it will ask you for a data center. Uh, in our case, we are located in Dallas, Texas, so we will be using a uh, data center in the south. Uh, we will also provide the login credentials uh, and once we log in, uh, you'll notice that the layout is very much um, kind of like Microsoft Office 2007 ribbon. So uh, let's some of these other points as we log into it, uh, we will uh, definitely see the product. So I'm going to switch over to Firefox and going to go ahead and post this in the link. Uh, when you come down here, it does talk a little bit about uh, the project. I will simply go ahead and launch Houston, and this is what I was talking about. It's asking for a data center. I will go ahead and pick South Central US. And the whole idea behind this is to um, maximize, I guess, your um, uh, throughput and, uh, you know, with better connectivity. So now we're getting uh, uh, sort of like a database login screen. I'm entering my server, and I'm going to go ahead and enter the sales database and the username, which is cash money and then the password. Uh, notice that we are using a SQL authentication for this product, which is um, what we have available. It will take a few seconds here and load up the environment. And this again has to do, I guess, with, you know, with the internet connectivity, which should be pretty decent in our case. And also, uh, you know, the the performance of the data center. So I'm going to give it a few seconds here. Uh, and if it doesn't load up, I will have to pause the video. So I actually ended up pausing and I had to reconnect. Uh, somehow the database uh, uh, connection did not work the first time around. But uh, regardless, here uh, we are logged into our system, which is up in the cloud. Uh, just a little uh, quick overview of this um, I guess workspace on the top we have our server this is the database we're logged into the user uh, and some other information here's what I call I guess the um, kind of like the ribbon that I was mentioning uh, we can quickly uh, you know get to tasks like creating a new query a new table view stored procedure on the left we have uh, what sort of looks like an object explorer and for now, we really have uh, uh, three tabs, which is you know, which are tables, views, and then stored procedures. Okay, uh, and then you know, some basic information in in the middle. So um, what we're going to do is um, uh, essentially try to create different objects uh, 
using this. So like I mentioned, uh, you see the Object Explorer on the left and uh, on the top you can create new objects and what we're going to start off by uh, creating a new table called suppliers so let me switch back to this and I am simply going to create uh, click on new table and um, here's a little uh, screen that's a little bit different than uh, what we're used to in management studio I, I do like it uh, so far it's pretty much uh, point and click at this point uh, you can go ahead and put in the name of uh, your table that you're creating and here is sort of like a design window for our table it already gives you three columns to begin with I'm actually going to go ahead and change the name of the first uh, column to suppliers ID I will leave it as an integer and I will also actually check this box so what we're doing here is um, designing our table uh, maybe this is somewhat um, similar to access if I dare use that word um, but let me just do this anyway um, so I'm going to call this suppliers name and here I'm going to use this uh, I'm trying to think I was playing with it later so I actually do have a table called shipper so I will just make this one shippers instead um, or so sorry this is uh, more like supplier so never mind um, here's a description we are going to leave here's the data type by the way you can change if you wanted to um, try something else I'm going to leave this as uh, nvar chart but I will change this to maybe a hundred okay and also you can add a default value if you needed to you can also make this a required field and then I will add you can add a new column by clicking here or also here so let me just do this and I'm going to call this a supplier code and I will change this to an integer and then I will make this a required field okay so so far so good we got four fields in here suppliers ID name description code let me go ahead and save it and uh, our, our changes should be committed now here's the nice thing about this tool that if you if you wanted to go ahead and enter information into suppliers you simply select the table in the left and then uh, select um, data actually let me uh, before I do that I'm actually going to go ahead and kill all of this here okay so now if I go to suppliers I should be able to enter data which it's not letting me do that it's certainly possible that our, our connection is not the fastest here So let me actually pause the video. I will come back and try to figure out this connectivity issue. Okay, so I am back. I apologize. Uh, I think I was having some uh, connectivity issues earlier, which actually does bring up a good point that um, with SQL Azure, since it is uh, a service in the cloud, you pretty much are dependent on your network internet connection so uh, anyway it looks like I think we are doing a little bit better here so we have this table like I mentioned um, suppliers we have full four fields in there and now we would simply want to enter the data so you can click on this tab uh, icon called data and here we essentially get our uh, data entry tool you can select a new row by this or by clicking here so I will simply do that the first uh, key is uh, field is an auto number key so I don't really need to do anything with that and the first supplier name I will say um, let's say Johnson supply LLC at this point uh, and the next one I will just say sub main supplier for our product okay um, and then next one you'll notice we kind of have to it's going a little bit off screen so 
I can go to this one, which is for this code, I'm going to use this as a one, okay? So that is our first row. I'm going to go ahead and add another one. And let me try this. We will call this um, ABC Supply Services, okay? This one, you can also enter something or you can set this to null, so I will do that. And this time I'm actually going to leave nothing in the value of... You will notice that uh, there's a little red, looks like an asterisk there, which shows you that this value is required. I'm actually going to go ahead and leave this as is and try to commit and see what happens. Uh, before I do that, uh, let me just actually go ahead and save this and see what happens to the data. See, so now uh, it gives me an error. It says an error occurred when editing table cannot insert the value of null into column code. Okay, so here's I need to come back here, add two in here and possibly in here. So let me just do three. 